All right, so here's sort of a tricky exercise. Um, I wasn't actually able to figure this out on my own. There's sort of a trick that you need to use um, or something that you need to consider. And Durrett has a solution manual that you can find on site online. And let's see here. So it's the exercises that are in a different order than they are in the version of the textbook that you can find for free online. But um, you can find the exercise and I had to refer to that in order to figure this out. So let's prove this. I first claim that f of x, and because x is a function from a measure space to the real line, um, I'm going to just for now write this as x of omega, where omega is an element of the measure space omega. Um, I won't do this the whole time, this is just for now. So anyways, I claim that this is less than or equal to y if and only if x of omega is less than or equal to, and now here's the set that we have to consider that I wasn't able to come up with on my own, and it's not obvious to me um, why you should think of this. But consider, um, given it, given any um, real number y, consider the supremum of all, no, given any y. So here, by the way, I'm going to let x in general, when I'm using these variables, lowercase x is going to be a real number and y is going to be a number between 0 and 1. So given any y between 0 and 1, define this set to be the largest real number x such that f of x is less than or equal to y. So anyway, so this is sort of, um, I was thinking to use something similar to this because this sort of looks like the set that you use in uh, one of the theorems in this section, but it's not quite because we have a less than or equal to instead of a strictly less than. Um, and that detail would have been difficult for me to come up with. But anyway, um, so let's prove this statement. Um, and then we can sort of uh, finish the exercise from that. So um, so to prove this if and only if uh, we want to prove both directions. So for one direction, if f of x of omega is less than or equal to y, then x of omega, so x of omega is a real number such that f of x of omega is less than or equal to y. Therefore, x of omega is in the set of all real, of all um, numbers, uh, no, 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 not y. Um, x of omega is in the set of real numbers x such that f of x is less than or equal to y. Okay, so if x is, if x of omega is in this set, then if we What this tells us is that x of omega has to be less than or equal to the supremum of all such elements. All right, and that's exactly um, what we wanted to prove for this direction. So that's one direction down. So this is always true. The other direction, um, So if x of omega is less than or equal to the supremum of x such that f of x is less than or equal to y, then certainly it's going to be the case that f of x 
is going to be less than or uh, less than or equal to y for any x which is strictly less than x of omega, right? Because x of omega is less than or equal to the supremum of all x such that f of x is less than or equal to y. And we know that um, f is a strictly increasing function because, or not strictly increasing, but it's an increasing function. We know that because it's, um, it's a distribution. So, anyways, so x of omega is below the largest x value such that you plug it into the function and you end up with something that's less than or equal to y. So if you plug in anything that's below the supremum, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right, if you plug in anything which is strictly, if you plug in any x which is strictly less than x of omega, then it's going to be strictly less than the supremum of all x such that f of x is less than or equal to y, which means that f of x has to be less than or equal to y in this scenario. Okay, um, so that, so this holds when we choose any x which is strictly less than x of omega, but we want this inequality to hold um, when x equals x of omega. So, now we haven't used continuity yet, so here's where we use continuity. So if it were the case that f of x of omega is strictly greater than y, then f would have a jump discontinuity at the point x of omega, right? Because if you, if you plug in any number which is less if you plug in any number which is less than x of omega, then you're going to land less than or equal to y. But as soon as you plug in x of omega, you jump up to a number which is strictly greater than y. So, um, so you have this jump, which is um, if you take whatever f of x of omega is and take the midpoint between that and y, that's a value that you're skipping over, and so you have a jump. And in fact, if you take x of omega, if you take f of x of omega and subtract y, that gives you the size of the jump. But anyways, um, so thus, since f is continuous, um, if f of x of omega. So thus, f of x of omega must be less than or equal to y. All right. Um, but x of omega is less than or equal to the supremum of all such values. So it must be the case that f of x of omega Oh wait, no, 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 no. That's exactly what we want. All right. So thus the desired bijection holds. So why did we prove that? We can now compute so let's see here. If we choose any y between 0 and 1, we can actually now compute the probability that f of x is less than or equal to y. I've dropped the omegas um, at this point because we don't really need it. Um, so remember, this is so this is the probability that y is less than or equal to y. This is equal to the probability that 
x, no, that f of x is less than or equal to y, but f of x is less than or equal to y if and only if x is less than or equal to this supreme, supremum that we wrote here. So this inequality holds precisely when x is less than or equal to the supremum of all y such that f of y is less than or equal to x. I think I have that flipped. Yes. Right, because the two sets on the inside um, are equal by the bijection that we proved. And that's why we proved the bijection. But now look at this. We have P of the we have the probability that capital that we have the probability that x is less than or equal to some given value. And that is by definition f of whatever you're inputting. So we have to take f of this supremum. Because remember the supremum of this thing, this is just a number. Okay, but if we take the supremum of all x such that f of x is less than or equal to y, um, then this is also going to be equal to y by continuity. Because if you plug in, if you plug in any number less than the supremum into f, you're going to end up with something which is less than or equal to y. And if you were to plug this number into f and get a number which is strictly greater than y, then by the same argument as before, you have a discontinuity at um, this point. So this is precisely equal to y by continuity. All right, so yeah, in my opinion, this is sort of a tricky problem. Um, you really have to keep in mind what things you're talking about and really understand the definition of a random variable and a distribution and be able to keep everything in mind. Um, and, that, and that's after you know to use this um, supremum set that we've introduced. Coming up with the idea to use that is non-trivial, in my opinion. Um, and even once we've come up with the idea to use that, it still takes some care to go through the rest of the details, but this is how you do it, and so we are done.